Dear friends, in this video, I will address the issue of the clear corneal wound stretch and in some cases possibly resulting in a tear during the injection of the foldable intraocular lens. So let's start with the visual of the injection of a single piece foldable hydrophobic intraocular lens being injected with a 2.8 mm cartridge system. At the end of this injection, one notices a distinct gape and distortion of the clear corneal incision. So here is a comparison of irrigation and aspiration being performed after IOL implantation and before IOL implantation, showing that there is a significant amount of wound leak that occurs after IOL implantation. This situation resulted because of certain fallacies in the assumption of what the ideal size of the injector cartridge should be. We all know that the clear corneal incision is a slit-like incision which is 2.8 mm wide and in most cases 1.5 mm in length, although this can vary from 1 to 2 mm. Well, the nozzle tip of the injector cartridge in most cases is circular or it could be oval. It's an erroneous belief that the diameter of the nozzle tip should match the corneal incision. Since the cylindrical device passes through a slit like incision. For smooth, effortless, and resistance free insertion of the nozzle, its circumference and not its diameter should match the size of the clear corneal incision. It's an important concept to understand. We know that the circumference of a circle is given by the formula 2 into pi r where r being the radius and pi has a numeric value of 3.14 since twice the radius is equal to the diameter it goes without saying that the circumference of a circle is three times its diameter we got this right with respect to the phaco tip which today has an outer diameter of 0.9 millimeters with a circumference of 2.7 millimeters and since the collagen of the cornea is elastic and can stretch without deformation to a certain extent, this tip and the silicon sleeve irrigation around it can pass comfortably through a clear corneal incision. However, there is a gross mismatch in circumference to incision size for IOL injector systems. Now, a standard 2.8 mm injector nozzle tip has an outer diameter of 2.65 mm with a circumference of 7.95 mm. In addition, the cone-like configuration of the nozzle means that the more you push the nozzle within the incision, the greater will be the distortion, which is the reason why you saw such a gape of the incision. Newer designs of the nozzle make them more forgiving. The Mona cartridge provided by Alcon and the AMO systems have a nozzle tip diameter of 1.65 and a circumference of 4.95 mm. In addition, they have a 4.5 mm cylindrical segment instead of a conical segment which enables us to perform a direct in the bag IOL drop at one go. Now, although they have been recommended by the company for micro incision cataract surgery of 2 mm or less, I suggest that they probably are best suited for the 2.8 mm incision. So enough of didactics and let's see some proof of concept here. So let's start with the first case example and fashioning a clear corneal incision after which the size of the incision is measured using a special caliper and we can see that there is a very snug fit of the 2.8 millimeter caliper into this incision. I proceed further complete phaco emulsification and at the end of phaco emulsification, when I pull out the phaco probe, I find that the clear corneal incision is quite pristine. There is no evidence of wound gape or wound blood. After completing the cortical washout, and just before the implantation of the intraocular lens, the size of the incision is measured once again. 
to see if there is any enlargement that has happened to the clear corneal wound uh, during the process of phaco emulsification and during coaxial IA. The 2.8 millimeter caliper fits snugly. When I attempt to pass the 2.9 millimeter caliper, I find that there is no extension of this clear corneal incision at all. Now this is the standard cartridge of a 2.8 millimeter hydrophobic acrylic bleed preloaded intraocular lens. The nozzle of the cartridge is pushed into the anterior chamber and the eye hole is injected. So when the nozzle is pulled out of the eye, you can uh, very clearly see the level of wound gain. This we've already seen. Now let's measure the size of the incision. The incision is definitely enlarged to 2.9. I then try a 3 mm caliper to see if this would pass through the incision and it passes quite freely and to my surprise I found that a 3.1 mm caliper was also able to pass quite effortlessly into through this incision. A 3.2 mm caliper is not able to get through well there is therefore an extension of at least 0.3 millimeter in the size of the clear corneal incision it started off with 2.8 and the measurement has increased to 3.1 after uh, the implantation of the intraocular lens Let's take case example number two. We directly go to the point where the phaco emulsification and the irrigation aspiration has been completed. The size of the incision is checked before implantation of the intraocular lens and it's just about 2.8. 2.9 millimeter calipers is not able to get in through the incision. In this case, I use a eye hands lens using a monarch cartridge which is meant for a 2 millimeter incision which has a 4.5 millimeters of a cylindrical segment to the nozzle and I actually place it within the wound and I inject the intraocular lens uh, which, uh, which is uh, carefully placed within the capsular bag. After the implantation let us measure the size of the incision. There is absolutely no extension or enlargement of the clear corneal incision. You still find it difficult to pass the 2.9 mm keratone into the eye. In this case, I performed a wound assisted injection of the intraocular lens. However, a similar model of the nozzle, which uh, is seen in the CT Lucia lens, I have no financial disclosures to make with respect to this. It also has an outer diameter 1.65 and a 4.5 mm cylindrical zone having the same diameter. So the nozzle can be placed directly within the anterior chamber and the IOL can be injected directly within the capsular bag. Now in case you want to implant the standard indigenous hydrophobic acrylic lenses that come either preloaded or foldable lenses that need to be loaded before injection. Let me make a simple and small suggestion. And for that, let us follow this case through. Intumescent cataract with a moderately hard a grade 3 nucleus sclerosis. You can see phaco emulsification being performed by the direct chop method. The nucleus is broken down into multiple small sized fragments, after which the mobilization of these pieces will happen and the fragments are removed methodically one by one. At the end of fragment removal, the remaining cortex is removed with the help of a coaxial wire handpiece. You can see that at the end of echo emulsification that the wound looks quite pristine. 
In this case, I am going to inject the standard hydrophobic acrylic lens using a cone type of nozzle in a butterfly cartridge. I am measuring the size of incision after the phaco emulsification has been performed. It is about 2.8 millimeters and a 2.9 millimeter caliper, which is difficult to insert through it. So the procedure of phaco emulsification does not stretch the incision in at all. Now, unlike the first case example, I am doing a wound assisted injection where the nozzle tip is placed at the clear corneal incision site and using the wound, the IOL is injected in a very careful fashion into the capsular bag. So let us now measure the clear corneal incision. You can see that there is not much of gape or distortion of the clear corneal wound like we saw in the first case. So let us now see whether there is an abnormal enlargement or tear of the clear corneal incision. Well there is. Uh, now you find that I am able to pass the 2.9 millimeter caliper. However, it is difficult to pass a 3 millimeter caliper. through the clear corneal incision. Now this means that there is an enlargement of just 0.1 millimeter of the incision when you use a docking method of implantation of these lenses. All you have to do is to keep the tip of the nozzle that measures about 2.65 at the lip of the clear corneal incision and then inject the lens in a very careful and controlled manner. You also see that there is not much of distortion of the main incision as there is no back leak of fluid that occurs during IA. So to sum up, I would like to say, and unless we reach a point where we can develop newer intraocular lens materials that can be injected through tiny bore nozzles, we should either inject our hydrophobic IOLs through 3.2 millimeter incision with a standard nozzle or a 2.8 millimeter incision with cartridges that are meant for the 2mm incisions. We could employ the wound assisted or the docking method for insertion to achieve less wound distortion and better post-operative results. I thank you for your attention.